Welcome back to our fourth part in our little series to connect your Cookie Consent banner with Google Tag Manager and fire your tags accordingly. Now, in the last few lessons, we have already wrapped up how we can fire our tags based on consent, but there's actually a mode inside of the Google Tags, so Floodlight, Google Ads, and Google Analytics that we would be able to tap into to utilize a special feature called consent mode. Now, before we get started, if you have not yet followed along with all our videos, you can head over to measureschool.com slash consent, where we have the full training for you ready over there, and you can watch it through in one go, as well as some downloads and resources to deepen your knowledge over there. Now, let's talk about our last topic, the consent mode. All right, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to utilize the consent mode for your Google tags. So what is consent mode all about? It's a way to adjust your Google tags. So this is only for Google tags, not for Facebook and so on, based on the consent that the user has given and how your tools such as analytics or ads react to the information that is now being sent through. And there are different kind of consent status pings that are happening for your Google Tags. This also includes Floodlight, by the way, to know which information can the tool actually use. So if you go down here, you see the ad storage is granted, the analytics storage is granted, what happens with that data, what actually gets transferred. If the ad storage is denied, what data gets transferred. And then we have different other settings here that might influence how Google Analytics handles the data that has been received. I don't wanna to get too deep into what this actually does. There are a lot of implications of this and the usefulness is sometimes still open in some people's mind. But nonetheless, I wanna show you how you can utilize these kind of different consent modes with Google Tag Manager and what we have built. So right now, no data is sent to Google Analytics or to Google Ads if the user didn't give us consent. So on the first page view, no data is transferred unless the user clicks that OK button. But with the consent mode, we can actually send some of the data over. Google Analytics will decide what to actually do with it. So how can we set this up? Well, when Google Tag Manager, we can take our Google tags right here and look into them. So Google Analytics 4, and when we go down here, we actually see that there are built-in consent checks that are already running, although we have created a additional consent check right here. And this is really about the consent that is in the consent mode already, and it will fire the tags even if no consent has been given, but in a different format. So what we can do is to click on not set here for this GA4 tag, and actually Google Ads conversion linker, for example, has the same settings. It will check for ad storage. We can click on not set here. Same for the remarketing tag. Again, if you don't see this built-in consent checks, then the tag is not eligible to actually do the same behavior as the consent mode intended to. So for example, if you go here to LinkedIn, there are no additional built-in consent checks. So right now it seems like, hey, these tags will always fire, which is kind of the case, but we see here that the consent has been configured for these two tags. Google Analytics 4 and Google Ads have not been configured, although we see here there are built-in consent checks as well. So let's go ahead and um, try this out and see what actually happens. I'm gonna go to preview here. And well, let's open up the developer tools and look under applications to delete the Claro cookie. So we actually get our desired form. So here now we have our consent banner. And if we look into container loaded, we see our tags fire normally on the page. The only difference that we don't really have too much visibility about, but what we can see is when we go into the network tab right here, we see all the requests that get sent over to our tools like Google Analytics right here. There's a collect call. And here we can read a special kind of parameter which would tell Google Analytics don't use that data because consent has not yet been given. And this parameter is the GCS parameter that you see right here. And it says GCS equals 100. We can actually also look into our Google Analytics debugger if you have that installed. I'm gonna reload the page. And here you should see the GCS parameter 
that is currently at 100 g100 g100 means that no consent has been given yet and theoretically that data that gets sent over should not be used for measuring it gets sent over but it's not being used by your interface you would actually not see something inside of Google Analytics. Now what happens if I now say this is okay. Let me just make this smaller and click that's okay. We obviously fire another Google Analytics tag and now GCS is set to G111, which means all the permissions have been given. We have permissions for the ad storage and we have permissions for the analytics storage itself. Also our Google Ads tags fire accordingly and so on. Unfortunately, there is no way right now to see what consent has been given other than looking into the parameters here and seeing, okay, there is a GCS attached to it. You can do the same for Google Ads. If you look at ads here, that's normally the conversion async right here. So conversion, it would be this one. Yeah, double click. We look for the double click call. So double click. And here we have our double click call, view through conversion. And here as well, we should have somewhere GCS. Now you should be able to do the same thing for the Google Ads calls. We'll go over to network here and we're simply going to put in GCS. That should give us, well, this is just the Google Analytics code. Let me reload the page here. No, uh, Google consent, this one, GCS, right? And we see here this going over to LinkedIn, but here we have Google Analytics. And here we have double click. This, these are the double click calls that go out for Google ads. And here we have also GCS 111. So the consent has been given right here. There are different other consent states. So uh, there's G100 that we already saw. Then there's G101. And that can be triggered by, let me delete the cookies here. And this time we'll choose. And now we are going to just give analytics access. So we should see in our network tab here, we have now GC 101, which means analytics storage has been granted, but not the ad storage has been granted. And now we can choose the last case. And this is the case of just the marketing that has been granted, but not the analytics storage. So let's go on the network here and look into this. This is G 110. All of these are corresponding to how Google Analytics will react when they see these parameters. Again, you can read about how Google Analytics actually what they do with this information in this help article as well. A few things to mention as well in the consent mode settings. We can choose here to pass ad click information through to URLs and we can redact ads data as well. Again, these are corresponding to the settings inside of the consent mode that you can check out as well what this does to your data. Again, some of this like ads data redaction true is a bit vague. Google Analytics will use that data in their machine learning, but make it not identifiable. So it might be safer for privacy reasons, although this must be checked with your local jurisdiction if this is actually something that would make it safe to send over to Google itself. Nonetheless, Google gives us these settings. They're only built in for their own tags, such as Google Ads, Floodlight, and Google Analytics. And for any other ads tags that you might have running, you still need to go the traditional route of blocking them from firing so the data doesn't get transferred if the user hasn't given consent yet. So this is how you can utilize the consent mode together with your setup of Google Tag Manager if you choose to do this for your Google Tags. All right, so there you have it. Now you should be able to use consent mode as well with Google Tag Manager. We came to the end of our series right here. We have installed our cookie consent banner. We have made it work with Google Tag Manager, triggered our tags accordingly, and also talked about the new consent mode in this video. Now, this is obviously an evolving topic. On the one hand, we have technology. Google Tag Manager is moving forward, making it easier for us to handle consent. On the other side, we have privacy laws that are also evolving. So if you want to keep up to date, you should definitely subscribe to our channel or check out also this video where I'm going to give my opinion about if Google Analytics is actually dead. Now, my name is Julian. See you in the next one.